Let's look at a little more complex problem uh, involving uh, the pressure created by columns of fluid. In this situation, we're going to have a pressure gauge and a manometer. So here's the problem that we're given. Uh, as shown in this figure, we have a closed tank holding air and uh, oil. So we have air over oil, and that tank is connected to a mercury manometer. The oil is this blue color, and the mercury is this pink color. All right. We want to know what uh, this gauge pressure reads. All right. We're given the densities of oil and mercury, and uh, also the acceleration of gravity. Uh, let's see how we're going to solve this problem. I've repeated the given data here. We have the density of the oil, the density of the mercury, the acceleration of gravity. And we need to know the height of each of these fluids. So the height of the oil, as you can see here, is L1 plus L2. And that's three feet plus a half a foot. That's three and a half feet. The height of the mercury is just L3, okay, above the height of the oil at the bottom. And that's going to be three quarters of a foot. So let's solve uh, this uh, system of uh, equations that, that are to follow. And let's keep it uh, in symbolic form as long as we can. It often pays to solve thermodynamic equations symbolically as long as it is practical before we start putting in numbers. And let's see why that is true. Okay. First thing we're going to do is recognize that the pressure at A is equal to the pressure at B. And that's because this system is in static equilibrium. If the pressure at A were higher or lower than the pressure at B, there would be movement in these, uh, these fluids through this conduit. And since this uh, is a static problem, we know that these two pressures are equal. What is the pressure at A? Well, the pressure at A is created by the columns of fluid above it. So that would be the column of oil and then the uh, pressure of the air on top of the oil. So we can say that the pressure at A is the pressure at A, or excuse me, the pressure of air plus the pressure created by the column of oil. What's the pressure created at point B? Well, it's the pressure created by this column of mercury plus the atmospheric pressure acting on top of the mercury. So we can say that the pressure at point B is the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure of the mercury. Substituting then, the pressure at A being the pressure at B, and the pressure at A is the pressure of the air in the tank plus the pressure of the oil. That's equal to the pressure at point B, which is the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the mercury. Now, since we're trying to solve for the pressure of air, let's rearrange and solve. The pressure of air is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure created by the column of mercury minus the pressure created by the column of oil. So before we continue, we have to consider what it is we're looking for. We were asked for the pressure gauge reading. And the, uh, um, the gauge is uh, on the uh, top of the tank, so there's air inside the gauge uh, creating a pressure reading for it. But a pressure gauge does not read the absolute pressure of the gas that's inside it. <clears throat> uh, a pressure gauge is actually a differential pressure gauge. It reads the difference between the pressure inside it and the atmospheric pressure pressing on its outside. And that's why we always distinguish between gauge pressure and absolute pressure. So we can say this, that the, uh, the reading on the gauge, the pressure of the gauge, is equal to the pressure of the air inside it minus the atmospheric pressure. So that's the, where the differential pressure comes from. It's the absolute pressure of the air minus the atmospheric pressure. So we can substitute into this equation what we had previously on the previous uh, slide. We had um, the pressure of the air we expressed as the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the mercury minus the pressure of the oil. We're going to substitute that here for piece of air. And then we've got to subtract the atmospheric pressure from that because we're trying to get the expression for the gauge reading. 
all right? But the atmospheric pressure terms cancel. And so we can say that the gauge reading, the pressure uh, uh, of the gauge, is the pressure of the mercury minus the pressure of the oil. <clears throat> but we know the pressure of the mercury is just rho GH for uh, the mercury terms. And the pressure of the oil is rho GH for the oil terms. So now we can substitute uh, these terms into our equation and we have the gauge pressure is equal rho GH for mercury minus rho GH for the oil. Now let's factor out the common uh, term in this expression, which is uh, the acceleration of gravity. And we have now the gauge pressure is the acceleration of gravity. And because we have a G in this equation and we're using English units, we're going to divide by G sub C to get the units to work. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that in right now. And that leaves us with rho H for mercury minus rho H for the oil. So now we can put values in. The gauge reading, the pressure gauge, is the acceleration of gravity divided by the uh, <clears throat> G sub C. Now I could have rounded G sub C off to 32.2. I simply chose not to. I have this value in my head. I've had it for 50 years. Uh, G sub C is 32.174 foot pounds mass per pound four seconds squared. And I suggest that it's an interesting enough value that uh, uh, you, you remember it. Okay, then we're going to multiply times the uh, density of mercury times the height of the mercury and subtract the density of the oil times the height of the oil. <clears throat> and I'm going to convert square feet to square inches so that I get uh, PSI and not pounds per square foot. Solving this previous expression, we're going to get the pressure of the gauge is 3.07 pounds force per square inch which we normally write as PSIG, that's pounds per square inch gauge pressure. Now, note that the absolute pressure of air is the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. This would make the absolute pressure of air in the tank 17.7 PSI. Remember that we always use the absolute pressure of a fluid in thermodynamic calculations, even though we measure often uh, the pressure of a fluid with a, with a pressure gauge. And we must remember that the absolute pressure of the fluid we're measuring is the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. Now in this problem, we were not asked for the absolute pressure of, of the uh, air. We were asked for the gauge pressure, what the gauge read, and that would be 3.07 PSIG.